video will introduce a model and selection, and that'll take the form of a nonlinear discrete time dynamics. Let's assume we're back to my standard example of bacteria growing on a petri. And let's say that these bacteria grow according. One is given by, let's say, 1.5 feet. This is their growth rate per capita growth rate times the population. Bacteria gives us the bacteria time. Okay, and let's say that on our petri dish, we actually have two kinds of bacteria. We have our, our normal bacteria or our wild type. And then we also have a mutant. Right? So there's some, some new gene that these mutants express, and that causes them to grow faster than the other bacteria. They grow per capita growth rate 2 as opposed to 1.5. Okay, and so we're interested in kind of seeing, okay, what's going to happen on our petri? Right? We have two kinds of bacteria. One's growing faster than the other because maybe it's more better adapted to the lab conditions than the wild type. And you know, both of these are increasing exponentially, right? Both pops are increasing exponentially according to this model. Okay, but the mutant pop is growing faster. Mutants population grows faster. Okay, so if we want to understand, you know, what's going on in our petri dish, like we could track both of these two mutants, uh, sorry, both of these types of bacteria, compare their population levels, or we could try to model the fraction of mutants instead. So if we call the fraction of mutants P, then this is given by mt over mt plus pt. Okay. That's the number of mutants divided by the total, total number of bacteria. Addition of both types of bacteria. Okay. And so maybe we're interested in tracking this, this fraction, or maybe this is easier to measure. Maybe maybe the mutant uh, glows when you shine a light on it, and the wild type doesn't. So measure the fraction easier than you can measure the independent uh, types of bacteria. Okay. So, you know, let's let's just compute one of these to give you an example of what we're talking about. All right, so let's say we had, you know, at time P, let's say that the bacteria, the wild type bacteria, let's say there were three times ten to the six individuals. And let's say for the mutants there were only two times ten to the fifth individuals. So then our total population right, is BT plus MT, right? So that gives us 3.2 times 10 to the individual bacteria of either type total. So then the mutant fraction, right? B sub T equal to M sub T over MT plus, right? Mutants divided by the total number of bacteria. So that gives us 2.0 times 5th divided by 3.2 times 10 to the 6th. Or, you know, 10 to the 5th cancels with this 10 to the 6th. We're left with 2 on top and 3.2 times 10 on the bottom. So it's okay, so 2 over 32, which is 1 over 16, or 0 0.06. That number. So this is the fraction of bacteria in our population that are mutants, not wild. But we could ask, you know, what's the fraction of wild type too? Wild type fraction. Right? That would just be the same thing, but instead of mt on top, we're going to have bt on. Top. Right? Bt. Number of wild type bacteria divided by the total. That would give us three times six, two times six, or three point zero over two. It's the 
ahead of the signal to cancel. And if we throw this into our calculator, we'll get 0 0.9375. So whenever we're interested in finding this fraction, we could just compute them both by hand separately. Or we can note that they're fractions, right? So the fractions should add up to one, right? The fraction of mutants plus the fraction of wild type should equal one, right? To add up to a whole. If I had, you know, draw my little schematic my petri dish, right? I have some number of these are wild type and some number are mutants. If these are the mutants, mutants and he, right, and this is the wild type, right, and there are BT of these, right, then these fractions, right, this fraction here, BT plus whatever this is should be one, right? The fraction wild type is then just going to be given by one minus if I call this, leave it fraction wild type. Right, I'm not going to give it its own name because the fraction wild type is just going to be 1 minus PT, the fraction of mutants. So I gave fraction mutants a variable name, and I could give fraction wild type a separate variable name, but it, it's easier if I just call it 1 minus PT. Okay, so then that case would be 1 minus. Five, which would give me 0 0.9, which is the same number that I calculated when I just took the number of wild types divided by the total number. Okay, and so now that maybe we have a grip on what the you know how we're going to track this using fraction instead of the actual numbers, we can ask questions like how does the fraction change over time? Mutants in this population change over time. Right, so if I write down my expression P the next time, right? P at time t plus one. So P is the fraction of mutants at time t plus one. Well, by the definition of the fraction, that's n at time t plus one, right? The mutants by the total number, nt plus 1 plus b. Total number is the number of mutants plus the number of wild types at time t plus 1. Right, so this is n at t plus 1 divided by n at t plus 1, and this is a plus sign, plus b times t. These are subscripts here, scripts, and this is a plus sign. A little, a little messy. But if I just use my expressions for n t plus one that I had before, back up. Right, we know that the wild type grows like this. B t plus one is one point five. The mutants grow like this. N t plus one is n t. So I can substitute those expressions here, and I get two n or two n times t plus one point five. Okay, and so this would be you know, a perfectly good expression for a fraction of mutants at time t plus 1 as a function of these two different populations at time t. But that's not really in the right form, right? If we want to say for discrete time dynamical system model, discrete time dynamical system. We want this in the form p at time t plus 1 is a function of p and t. Right? This is p at time t plus 1 as a function of nt and bt. So we want to rewrite nt and bt as uh, pt. Right? We want to change these populations into fractions. So the trick to do this is not obvious. But we're going to divide both the numerator and the denominator by the total 
population. Which is NC. Okay, so if I do that in my model, um, B plus one is now two NT divided by NT plus divided by so that I divided the numerator by NT plus B total population, and then I do the same thing on the denominator. I have two NT plus one point five. I'm going to divide this by nt total population. Okay, and then I can simplify this a bit, so I'll make this 2nt over nt. 2 times this. And then I can split this one up, so I'll have 2 times nt plus 1.5 times bt over n. Okay, and now I have what have it this in the right form now. So recall that nt divided by nt plus bt, right? This is the number of mutants divided by the total number of bacteria that gives me the fraction of mutants. Okay, mutant. And then on the other hand, this expression here. Right, this is BT divided by NT plus. Right, the fraction, uh, the number of wild type bacteria divided by the total number of bacteria that gave me one minus P. Right, the fraction wild type. Okay, so then that makes our discrete time dying system model have this form: P a time T plus one is equal to two BT. Divided by 2 pt plus 1.5, 1 minus p. Right? And this is indeed in the form f of pt. It's a function purely of the fraction of mutants. So let's just check that this formula is uh, giving us. I think it should give us. So let's say we have. Example, let's say we started with, like before we had nt was 2.0, b, the wild types, at time t was 3.0 times 10 to the 6, and that gave us that the fraction mutants was 0 0.065. So now, if we take a time step forward, right, n at time t plus 1 is 2 times nt, that gives us 4. And 10 to the right, and bacteria, wild type bacteria at time t one is 1.5 times uh, bacteria, wild type bacteria at time t, which gives us 4.5 times the six. If I multiply 1.5 by here, okay. So then, if I ask, you know, what is my fraction now? Fraction now is p t one is equal to n at n t one, right? The number of mutants at this time over the total number. That gives me four times ten to the fifth over four point nine times sixth, or four point zero over nine, sorry, forty nine. Ten to the fifth and ten to the sixth cancel and give me a ten on the bottom. So I multiply that through to get forty nine here, and that gives me zero point zero eight. Number. Four and six. Okay, this is doing it out the long way, or we could use our model, right? Or we use our model that says p at time t one, two p t over 2pt plus 1.5, 1 minus p, and we plug in p at time t is 0 0.065, so we have 2.05 over 2, 0 0.065 plus 1.5, 1 minus 0.65, right? 
we do this all out, it moves on a calculator on the side, we end up getting the same. Okay? So either you step through both of these two models, right? So this is two, three times. Dynamical systems that you have to step through. And then one function you have to apply. Or if you do it the second way, okay, you put in all the hard work ahead of time, and you only have to evaluate or update one discrete. Okay. And so I think this video is getting a little long. I'll stop this one here, and the next one we'll analyze the uh, equilibrium of these and do a more general model.